Have you ever had one of those moments in life that takes you by surprise? A setback. And you find yourself asking yourself that, that really big, hairy question, so what do I do now? Have you ever had that? I have. 18 months ago, I sat on King's Beach pondering that very question. As some of you may know, I was the, I was the poor bloke who got beaten by Clive Palmer at the last election. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I had never been bitten by a dinosaur before. <laughs> I tell you, it, it, it does hurt. But I don't say that to, to scare you, I really don't, because since then, no one has seen that dinosaur around this local area since. <laughs> you know, as I, as I sat there on the beach and I was pondering my own life and what to do, my head was, was clouded with all of these social issues that had consumed me throughout the course of a, of a political campaign. And to give you some examples, so you know what I'm talking about, we have about nearly two and a half million Australians living below the poverty line. We have about 40,000 substantiated cases of child abuse every year. 100,000 people homeless. Around two and a half thousand people every year committing suicide. Many of these people are young people. Young people who already face enormous challenges around mental health, illicit drugs and alcohol. And we have almost now about 300,000 young people, 300,000 who are unemployed. And as I sat there on the beach that day, the, that was the issue that just, I couldn't shake. It was that youth unemployment, because I always saw it as, Less than a statistic, not so much a statistic, it was more a, it's like as a proxy for all of these other issues facing young people, sapping them of hope and opportunity. And by the way, it didn't, it didn't escape me the, the irony of my situation. I mean, there I was sitting on a beach, I didn't have a job myself and I was wondering how to solve unemployment. I mean, seriously, a bit thick in the head or something, but work that one out. You see, the, the problem is, though, I knew that, thanks to my own background, I'd be okay. I'd find work, and I was. I was okay. But whose responsibility was it to look after the thousands of young, unemployed people on the coast, looking for a job, and they just couldn't find one? Do we look to government? Do we look to the marketplace? Over recent decades, we've become so overly reliant on both. We've looked at government and big business, the marketplace, to solve our biggest social problems. And you know what? That's probably all well and good when they're flush with cash, when their balance sheets are looking healthy, but nothing lasts forever. And surely the global financial crisis and its aftermath taught us at least that. And over the same period of time where we've been over overly reliant on them. We've also neglected a third sector of our society, that which we refer to often as civil society. Sometimes nowadays we just use the expression of the community sector. But civil society has been eroding. Family units have been breaking down, not strengthening. People's spirituality has been waning, not enriching. Volunteers have been falling short of demand, not exceeding it, and trust, trust in our public institutions, that's been dissipating, not building. And so whose responsibility was it, as I sat on the beach thinking about youth unemployment? Well, as far as I was concerned, it, it was mine. It was mine as much as it was anybody's. But in wanting to do something about it, I wanted to do it in a different way. In a way that was positive and not negative. In a way that would accentuate 
a solution rather than the problem in a way that would empower young people to unleash their own genius and not be forced to conform to the conventions of older generations. And my idea was a really, really simple one. I wanted to explore youth entrepreneurship as a solution to youth unemployment. And thus I launched something called Generation Innovation, whose purpose really is to unleash the innovation of young people. And I can't tell you how excited I am today, actually, to be here, because only last week we concluded what we called the GI Challenge, which was a challenge of youth entrepreneurship for 15 to 25-year-olds here on the Sunshine Coast. You see, young people who want to set up their own business, they lack three things. They lack experience, they lack a network, and they lack money. So we wrap those three things around GI participants. And I tell you what, they're brilliant. Some of them are straight-A students, some kids at risk, some out of school and out of work, but I tell you what, with a background that I have internationally, with some of the world's largest businesses, I kid you not, the genius and the talent and the insight that comes from these young local people is as best, as good as I've seen around the world because we've unleashed their genius. We've wrapped around them the things that they currently do not have. And as of last week, we now have three ventures about to launch in the marketplace. A, a food retail concept, Swift Smoothies, a social enterprise called Koi Crew, and a technology startup called Holographic Estate. Entrepreneurship as a solution to unemployment. Now, the GI challenge beyond being an initiative with that objective in mind was actually a lot more than that. It was in fact a pilot and continues to be for rebuilding civil society. Because it's weak today, civil society, people are falling through the cracks. What Generation Innovation, the GI Challenge, did was it said, well, civil society shouldn't just be restored like it was back in the, in the 50s, but we need to rebuild it for the future, something that's fit not for our grandparents but for our grandchildren. And that means, as a not-for-profit, local, small initiative, we needed to be mindful of the future trends that are going to shape our future. Rebuilding civil society means accounting for the information age, which means the GI challenge, we had to be strategic and highly collaborative. And we did that by having about 50 local organisations from business, community and academia coming together. We had over 100 volunteers and well over 1,000 of locals from the Sunny Coast community who either provided input or donated microfinancing through to these ventures. The digital revolution is also impacting us now and into the future. And so for GI, for our challenge, our head office was our website. That's where we enrolled participants, answer questions, that's where we showcase pitching videos of young people. That's where we run crowdfunding campaigns and online voting systems. Our meeting place is feedback. That's where ideas are shared, feedback is given, and documents are trans transferred over. And lastly, uncertainty. Now, this is the new normal, as some of you know. As volatile as it's been of late around the world and even here, locally, our lives for the last few years, volatility is here to stay. And so for our little not-for-profit, a core capability that we seek to build is resilience. And beyond that, 
economic independence. And so as much as our underlying mission is a social one, not, not one dollar, not one cent has come from government for the GI challenge. Now it's one thing to look at this and to talk about a small local initiative, but it's quite another to think about how we can do that on a grander scale. Because therein lies the real challenge of rebuilding civil society. I'm talking here about a degree of collaboration that has never been seen before. I'm talking about community groups and individuals leveraging technology, people who, and groups that currently don't even use it, leveraging it. I'm talking about organisations being prepared to wean themselves off government funding, re-engineering their business models and revisiting the very meaning of volunteerism. These are big things, big asks. In fact, they require a cultural shift. And the only thing, the only thing that has ever, ever, ever changed culture is leadership. Now, there are leaders out there who have the capacity to lead, but they bemoan society and don't do anything about it. There are leaders out there who do have a social conscience, but they look to government to solve it. My call to action goes to different leaders. Leaders who have the capacity to lead, but also they assume the responsibility to do so. Whether they're in the home, in the churches, in the community groups, through our politics or the economy. Civil society rests on your shoulder. Let's work together and rebuild it. Thank you very much.